spontaneous I put in our makes me feel so good, you know that? <laughs> One of the things I do like to do when I get in front of an audience is to shout out the typical Irish greeting, top of the morning, and have my audience respond to that top of the morning to me. So just to get a bit of energy and fun into the room, I'll shout out top of the morning to you. You come back with top of the morning and go from there, okay? So top of the morning! Top, top of the morning! Hey, that was a good Toastmasters top of the morning, but we can get a little bit more into it, okay? Yeah. Some of you were obviously celebrating the table topics competition last night. Yeah. So this time on the count of three, you go with top of the morning and I'll respond back to you, okay? Yeah. So on the count of three, you go with top of the morning. One, two, three. Top of the morning! What's up? <laughs> through some tips, tricks, and techniques this morning that will help you to add humor to your presentations. And if you adopt some of these tips, tricks, and techniques, which I've got in a little workbook here, it will help you to add humor to your presentation, whether it's in Toastmasters or whether it's out outside Toastmasters. And if you're serious about winning a humor speech competition within the Toastmasters environment, this program would be of immense benefit to you. No. But we will also have that this morning. So you're expecting a lot of fun, yeah? Yeah. Hey, forget about it. Right? I mean, this is an education session. We're going to learn by people. We're going to learn. All right. But what we'll also have, though, is we'll have some crack. Okay? <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, I forgot where I was. Sorry. Um, in Ireland, the word crack in our regular uh, lexicon actually means fun. So oh. if you hear an Irish person say, hey, how's the crack? It means, how's the fun? Or, where's the crack? And people say, where's the fun? And the normal response is, if someone says, how's the crack? The response is, mighty. Okay? Mighty. So we'll try that. How's the crack? Mighty. Okay, very good. I'll throw that out a few times during the session. Okay, so when I say, how's the crack? You go, mighty. Mighty, mighty, mighty. excellent. Now, just to reinforce this concept of crack for you, I've done a number of different books, and one of the books I actually write a number of limericks about Ireland and a little bit of history as well. So the limerick about crack goes as follows, and it is She said we'd have some crack to the cop who was taken aback. But she meant they'd have fun, so they danced in the sun, had a pint, a beer, and a snack. Yeah. Alright? So how's the crack? Bye. Bye. Okay, alright. What we do here this morning is, I'll take you through some tips, tricks, and techniques. I will, hopefully, you'll find some humor in what I say, and when ha we have the humor, we'll go back and we'll review and we'll audit it. That's going to be the kind of format. Rather than doing a process where, this is how you build the joke, or this is how you build the humorous piece, because then at the end of it, you've kind of lost all of the impact, etc. But to start off though, I'd just like to give you a quick little icebreaker, if I can call it that. Uh, I've been working on my Chicago accent now for 18 years. <laughs> I'm pretty slow, am not I? Yeah? yeah. Right. And I came over from Ireland, dragged my darling wife and beautiful daughter over, I, and my beautiful daughter is actually going to make me a granddad in about six weeks' time. Oh. Hey. Right. And uh, when we came over, there were some different challenges and issues. We do speak English, it's our uh, basic language in Ireland, uh, but it, words have different meanings. Um, so, for instance, I remember the first time someone said to me, Connor, um, do you have siblings? And I thought, what kind of terrible disease is that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in Ireland, we used to have brothers, sisters, but I wasn't actually used to the word uh, siblings until I came over here. Uh, another example was that uh, we became US citizens about uh, seven years ago. Um, so this is proof positive that the U.S. immigration system is bust, okay, and we will get U.S. citizenship. But in getting our U.S. citizenship, we had to go through a lot of interviews and a lot of paperwork, as you could imagine. This was before things really clamped down. And for our final interview, we go down to the immigration offices down in Chicago and do a final interview. And uh, those of you who are uh, Catholic, it was a bit like going into the confession box and you had the parish priest there kind of uh, who knew you were the little young punk in the town kind of thing, going to give you some trouble. So I went in, I got asked various questions and it went pretty okay. My wife went in to uh, the mother superior <laughs> and uh, she came over a few minutes afterwards and I said, how did it go, Pat, my wife's name? How did it go? And she said, okay, except... One of the questions they asked me was, 
Are you or have you ever been a prostitute? <laughs> and like you, I was totally astonished. And I said to her, how did they know? <laughs> culture and Irish culture. In the United in Europe, uh, when you visit a restaurant, you leave a gratuity or a tip mm -hmm. if the service is good. Uh, and that's what I kind of understood when I came over here to the States first. Except on one occasion we were down in uh, New Orleans, just as I was getting used to the US uh, system, and we ate in a restaurant that was so bad in terms of food and service that uh, even uh, the cockroaches would have abandoned us, right? Um, uh, our waitress was a, was a small woman, but she was mean and she was nasty, uh, which meant she couldn't have been Irish, okay? Uh, she was kind of like a cross between a rabbit chihuahua and Judge Judy. That's the best way to describe it. Um, this is the kind of woman know that made Nancy Gray seem like a maternal figure, okay? Um, after the evening, uh, I said to my wife, I I'm not going to leave a tip. The service is absolutely uh, appalling. Uh, not realizing that the waitress really relied on tips for some income. I like to say she didn't get a lot. Um, so as we were leaving, the waitress realized I wasn't going to leave a tip. She came over to me faster than she moved all night. <laughs> <laughs> um, I thought she was going to bite my ankle, to be honest with you. And in a, uh, in a now dimly lit and deserted restaurant, uh, she started uh, abusing me. Uh, started, then she followed us out into Bourbon Street area. And this woman could speak so fast and she could use so many profanities that in retrospect, she must have had Irish blood in her. <laughs> um, and then I had my wife uh, saying in one ear, uh, I told you you should have left the tip. And then a waitress saying, uh, kind of calling into my parentage into question. And then we had one of the New Orleans figures, a bow of feathers around the neck, mascara on the eyes going, Oh, who's been a naughty boy then? <laughs> that was not a good experience, but that's just an example of the kind of differences between Ireland and uh, the United States. Uh, for those of you who have uh, ever been in the hospitality trade or wait staff, I uh, promise you I do not do that anymore. I give very good tips for anyone. Uh, but uh, that was just an example of the way different cultures created different impressions. Different, same words, but different meanings to create different impressions as well. And what we'll do here now is that we will look at some of the things that made you laugh when I was telling that story. Um, we look at some uh, other lessons that will help you to add humor to your presentation. Now, if I say something funny, give me a five-letter word that I hope you will do when I say something funny. No, all right. Who said wits? <laughs> right. Okay, laugh. Um, spell laugh for me, please. L-A-G-H. Very good class, very good. Um, all right, all right. So what, the reason I'm doing that is, one of the ways that will really help you to remember material is that, I'm going to give you a lot of material here this evening, this morning. Um, a lot of it is in the, this little uh, workbook here that I have got. But I want you to be able to remember some basic concepts. So if I give you an acronym that spells a five letter word that you will do when I say something funny, that acronym is going to be the word laugh. Laugh. All right, okay. So if you can just even remember the word laugh, you'll be able to remember core concepts of what we're talking about. And the five letters, and we'll never go through them in briefly. And letter number one is. Excuse me. No. <laughs> 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 That's right, Jack. That's right, Jack. Yeah. Um, actually, one of the things. Um, my wife and I, we've been married for many, many years, happily, thank God. Um, but when uh, I, my wife sees us, uh, we don't know each other so, so well that I said, shut up. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I was uh, walking down at the library a couple of uh, days ago, and someone sneezed beside me, and I was just about to say, shut up! Good job I didn't, kind of thing. <laughs> but, so the first letter in, in this in laugh is L, and L is for listen. Listen, uh, the basic idea here is that over the last few days, you almost certainly have said something that made people smile. 
by or made people laugh. You probably don't remember what it was, and you didn't pay a whole lot of attention to it. But what I'm asking you to do, if you're serious about adding humor to your presentation, is that you're going to have to work at this. And one of the simple ways that would help you is to listen when people laugh. And ask yourself, hmm, what is it that they are laughing at? Now, if we take out two letters out of the word listen, the last two letters from listen, what word are we left with? Listen. Listen, okay, all right. So basically, what you, I'm encouraging you to do is to develop a list of funny material, develop a list of funny comments, develop a list of funny things you say or other people say, and it will help you add humor to your presentation. Someone once said that dying is easy, comedy is hard. Right? And there is a, I mean, it's not literally true, but I mean, there is a, a an element of truth in it. And the basic point about humor is that, uh, how many people here, you're all here because you want to add humor to your presentation? Yes? Yes. Okay, yes. How many people here are really serious about adding humor to your presentation? <laughs> <laughs> right, so maybe 50% of the room, but hands and, and will go up there, but I don't have anyone here in this room. If you're really serious about adding humor to your presentation, I'll just do one little uh, anecdote. Uh, has anyone here seen the movie Comedian? It follows, uh, Jill, you've seen it, it follows uh, um, Seinfeld uh, as he left the show and he was going up on uh, doing open mic uh, again on comedy nights. And it took him uh, uh, one year to develop sufficient material to go out and speak to a large group of people or audiences. And what, what you see in the movie, it's a 2002 movie called Comedian, very interesting, um, is that he go into little uh, nightclubs spend uh, five to seven to ten minutes doing a little piece of material, see what kind of reaction he goes, then he'll do the same material again and another night come down the road kind of thing, unannounced most of the time, and he just uh, build it up uh, from there. But after three months, Jerry Seinfeld, one of the most successful comics in uh, US history, who has uh, numerous speech writers and uh, script writers to write for him if he wants them, after three months, Jerry Seinfeld had you know, only 20 minutes of material. Right. So for you, the lesson from that is that you've got to work at developing humor to your presentation. And from a mindset point of view, um, before you listen, before you list material, the critical thing you need to have, I think, is a commitment to adding humor to your presentation. So if any of you are serious about uh, adding humor to your presentation, just uh, say to yourself, all right, I, I'm serious about this. I understand that it does take some time, it does take some effort, but if we put in the time and effort, it would be of use to me. Let's have a look at the list and listen for a second. If we go really minimal, at least once a week you're going to say something that makes people laugh. I'll put a smile on people's face, yeah? Yeah. Right, at least once a week. So, we've got the humor speech competition in about 26, 28 weeks time, I'm sure. Right. So if you were to list one each week for the next 26 or 28 weeks, something that you said or someone else said that made people laugh, how many pieces of humor do you have? 26, 28. Now I'm not saying they're all going to be relevant. But what would happen though is that you would actually see that as a you develop but more conscious of this, you start finding more relevant material. And as you find more relevant material, you actually become more energized to find more relevant material. On uh, my iPhone there, which I'm actually using to record uh, this, uh, I put down, a, I use I, uh, Apple Notes, that's my uh, list maker kind of thing, and uh, numerous things just get dropped into it on a regular basis. So I'm kind of well used to it now. The thing is that if you don't write it down when you think about it, you're going to forget it. You really will. And that happens to me regularly. You'll say, all right, I'll remember that 10 minutes later. What was it? Yeah. I can't remember. Uh, so I mean, if you're uh, driving the, the car or something like that, just take out your notepad and uh, write it uh, down. And uh, when the policeman stops you, <laughs> just say, well, officer, the Irish guy said I could do this. Uh, so uh, well, don't go as extreme as that, but do get into the habit. So with commitment is a critical element of this. So we're looking for the word laugh and acronym. List and listen, right? 
The second element of adding humour to your presentation, A is for when you're at a coffee shop or at a pub or at a social event and you are talking with friends, a lot of the time there's a lot of laughter and a lot of uh, fun. Uh, what is the catalyst for that laughter or fun? Authenticity. Authenticity, okay. Appreciation. Appreciation. Audience. Audience, okay. Forget the word A, no. <laughs> <laughs> Story, all right? Oh, Stories, common, yeah. Okay. Connection. Common, common knowledge, yeah. common Com connection. Common connection. connection and knowledge, that's actually very true, I like that as well. But you're saying stories, okay? All right, give me another word for stories that starts with A. An anecdote. Yeah, an anecdote, yeah? All right, so basically, the second element of the LA acronym, we've got listen, or list, and list. A is for anecdote. And when you tell a story that uh, your people connect with, when you tell a story that uh, you can uh, get laughter at your coffee shop or your pub, etc. Start paying attention to that because that is gold. And if you can tell stories to your friends without being embarrassed, and you can tell those stories to basically anyone, either in a professional setting or at a Toastmaster setting. You have a question, did you? It wasn't alcohol. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You're my brother! <laughs> okay, alright. <laughs> I'll give an example of a, a, an anecdote that a few years back I was driving the, the western uh, suburbs uh, in uh, reasonably heavy traffic. Came to a set of traffic lights and I turned left at the traffic lights. And a few seconds after turning left, I noticed in my rear view mirror a mobile discotheque. <laughs> Cop car, flashing light, okay? All right. I put to the slower lane, and my new friend put to the slower lane. And I remember saying to myself, as clearly as I'm standing here, I said, well, for the love of St. Patrick and St. Bridget, what would that fine officer of the law want with an upstanding citizen like me? <laughs> well, that was the gist of what I was thinking. All right? um, I, I do admit I came out with one four-letter word, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, and Toastmasters, for those of you whose mind is in the gutter, the word was oops. <laughs> it stands for, uh oh, please stop. <laughs> so I asked myself, what did he want to speak to me about? And the only reason I figured why he might want to speak to me was when I had turned left at the filter arrow, it was slightly red. Oh. But not by a lot, I mean, come on. Okay. The only thing that kind of bugged me about this was that the cop was driving an unmarked police car. Which is totally unfair. <laughs> I, I mean, the way it worked was that I, he was, I was actually on this side of the traffic lights, uh, he was on this side of the traffic lights, and uh, if he'd been driving a marked police car, I obviously wouldn't have done it. <laughs> he was there in his unmarked police car looking for uh, some dumb Irish paddy to go through the red light, and I obliged. I put into a small little parking lot at the side of the road, and my new friend followed me in. Um, and as he was checking me on his computer to see in my case if I was a member of the uh, Irish Republican Army um, or even worse, a Patriots fan, um, I asked, uh, I kind of asked myself a question, what do I want my attitude to be, which is a question I often ask when things uh, go wrong. And I decided there was no point in being antsy and annoyed about this. And I reckon he didn't get the concept of slightly red light. Okay? <laughs> so, um, I look at my side mirror, I see the cop get out of his car and walk up towards me. And because this happened in Chicago land, which is a good Irish town, I pray that he's an Irish name. I pray that he this vision of Ireland from the quiet land, that the road is still unpaved, that he thought milk was still brought to the cream in the Adamian car, and that his firstborn child had just been christened Flynn Murphy O'Flaherty. <laughs> right. I look up, Officer Schmidt, oh. right. who proceeded to advise me what I had done wrong. He asked my license, he asked my insurance, uh, I gave him my license, I gave him my insurance. Um, I should tell you that this incident happened uh, a few years back, and the day it happened was the 16th of March. Oh, oh, which yes. uh, is one day before St. Patrick's Day, it probably did help me a little bit. So the rest now of what was already a very affable conversation continues as follows. You might be surprised at one of the comments I made, but it didn't cause him any problems. So the conversation goes, uh, how much will this cost me, officer? 
and uh, that'll be a seventy-five dollars, sir. Just pay in the next two weeks. There won't be any further problem. Seventy-five dollars? Do you know how many points you get us that can get more? The man crapped up. <laughs> I think he thought I was in crystal meth. <laughs> and he said to me, sir, if I was to say you could run through the red light and for the lack of insurance, this would happen to go to traffic court and this would be way more expensive. So I gave him my, uh, he gave me my little $75 note and I said, I appreciate the break you're giving me. He went back to his car. Um, so, because uh, I put into a very small parking lot with only one exit and egress, to enter the parking lot, I've got to turn my car around and drive by Officer Schmidt. As I'm driving by Officer Schmidt, I kid you not, the cop looked up and he waved to me with a genuine smile. And I'm thinking, this is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> this guy just fired me 75 bucks and he's waving to me with a genuine smile. And I waved back to him with a genuine smile. And I'm thinking, this is really stupid. <laughs> Uh, but the basic point of that story, though, is that when I expand it more at sessions I do, is um, the basic point was that because I asked myself the question, what do I want my attitude to be? Uh, I was able to have a different attitude when he came up to me. He said, sir, I like your attitude. That changed the whole environment. As a result of that, then we became best buddies and all this kind of thing. Um, so it only cost me 75 bucks. Now, that's an example of what I mean by anecdote, all right? Uh, and I'll just go to the next letter for a second. We got listen, anecdote, and I'll come back to anecdote then. U is for uncomfortable. Uncomfortable. Right. So by that I mean the funniest stories that you relate with or to your friends are stories often where sometime during that story you were uncomfortable. All right? Okay. So that story with the cop, I mean, obviously, when they, I saw the mobile disc behind me, I did come up with that four letter word. Oops, as you can imagine. Um, so, I mean, it was kind of an uncomfortable situation. But it wasn't an end of the world situation. And then when I started talking to some people about it afterwards, I began to realize hey, take the first letter of la, which is listen, 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 listen. Yeah? I began to realize hey, people are laughing at the story I was telling. And then what I started to do was I started to just uh, kind of enhance it. Now, here's a question for you. How much of that story do you think is true? <laughs> right? a, a little bit. The only part that is not true is, I'm not sure what the cop's name was. I swear, that's all. But let's just think about this for a second. Um, I'm talking about, I was praying that the cop had just christened his newborn son, Flynn Murphy O'Flaherty, and then I come out with the word, Officer Schmidt. Right? Which gets a reaction. The reason why it gets a reaction is it's a total contrast to what I've been needing you to do. And that's one of the key elements of humor. If you can add surprise or contrast to your presentations, you will make a real difference to you. If I had said his name was Officer Murphy, I mean, there would be no laughter, and I would have kind of just, I mean, it would still be a good story, obviously. I don't know what his name was. I can't remember. Um, uh, and uh, for just come over, what board can I put in there? And there would be a real contrast to the way I get in the right? So think about, can you contrast your material? Uh, to, so kind of putting them in this direction, so you're going to go in that direction, all right? OK, so uh, the thing is about you is more uncomfortable, is say to yourself, um, go, we'll go back to listen, the stories I'm telling, uh, Almost certainly you tell stories that uh, you were uncomfortable at some stage. So for instance, for the ladies here in this room, you probably know when you're getting together with friends, you can tell stories about the, uh, the jerk who broke your heart at the prom or something like that. Or the guy who, um, uh, 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 kind of, the boyfriend, you, you can make fun of the boyfriend that you were in high school with. Um, for those of you men here in the room, by the way, you're the jerks that ladies are talking about. <laughs> right. Okay, but the thing is that what you're doing is, uh, at a time it was uncomfortable, it might have been really upsetting almost, but now that you're a mile away from it, you can actually laugh at it, right? Um, some people say that comedy is humor, is tragedy, uh, separated by time. Uh, I think that is too extreme, it's not tragedy, right? We do believe it's uncomfortable, separated by time. So as you're telling stories about uh, those elements uh, that make people laugh at your coffee shop or at your pub, take the first letter, list, 
and listen to what uh, is going on. Next thing I would say to you is that, so we've got listen, anecdote, uncomfortable. See, the other example was the anecdote was, uh, I just want to tell the story about getting the uh, immigration and the, the US uh, naturalization, and tell the story about Pat, my wife. I mean, that story is true. That was the question she was asked. Um, other interesting questions, by the way, that immigration do ask, in fact, are when you're, tra um, uh, you, the, <coughs> when you're traveling from some countries into the United States, they will ask you to fill in a form, and one of the questions is, are you, or have you ever been, a terrorist? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Will I tell a lie? Will I tell a lie? Right. So, uh, but again, that's just an example of something I saw, and I paid attention uh, to it. Now, other examples of what we can go through here. So we we'll listen, anecdote, uncomfortable. G is for the Googler. Okay? Get on the Google and start uh, Googling for the computer. I'll give you some examples of things you can uh, Google for. So, uh, if you are looking for, who here is a, anyone here in the legal field? Good, we can make jokes about lawyers, okay? <laughs> Right, but basically, when, when you're speaking to uh, an audience, I mean, it's, not, it's going to be dead easy for you to find jokes about any profession, right? So if I'm speaking to a group of lawyers, I will not make jokes about lawyers, right? But I will make jokes about accountants, right? If I'm speaking to accountants, I'll make jokes about lawyers or something like that. But basically what you can do is, you get onto the Googler, all right? Um, and you Google on the thing, as I say, uh, for items like, Jokes about Toastmasters, right? I'll give an example of, um, actually this isn't a joke, this is uh, some uh, advice that I had uh, got uh, previously. But I've been involved in Toastmasters over maybe 12 uh, years or so. I've been involved in three jobs, I'm a professional speaker, where I actually love going to Toastmasters and just having a chance to uh, do five to seven minutes of nuggets of material that I do. Uh, but I do remember, so how much time have we got? About 15 minutes, okay? Give me a big wave of 10 minutes, or 5 minutes to go, okay? All right, I'll make goodbye, all right? Um, so, uh, but I do remember when I joined Toastmasters first, you get a lot of advice, yeah? Right. And um, one of the pieces of advice I remember seeing was that uh, to avoid being nervous in front of your audience, imagine your audience in their underwear. <laughs> right. Yeah. No. What no, kind right. of nutcase? <laughs> Some kind of a fetish for underwear came up with that kind of an idea. I mean, the basic premise appears to be that I'm going to be less nervous if I imagine you in your long johns. And that's only the ladies. <laughs> right. Uh, but I do remember that the, the first time I got that advice, just a few days after getting that advice to imagine your audience in their underwear, um, I was asked to present at a conference for the Little Sisters of the Poor. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what do you do? I mean, do nuns have a Victoria's Secret for nuns or something? Like that? <laughs> Actually, one of the things now that I, I'm sorry about this, but um, I've probably sown a really bad seed here now for you. Oh, because uh, the next time you see the sound of music, oh, um, the next time you have the nun singing, what do we do with a problem like Maria? Oh, boy. You won't be thinking, what do we do with a problem like Maria? You'll be thinking, what kind of underwear are they? <laughs> this, my friends, will become a bad habit. Yes. Oh. Oh, Jokes can really work well. Okay? <laughs> if you get your audience to grow, you're actually succeeding. And if you know it's a bad joke, just kind of admit it like and say, all right, that was terrible, wasn't it? All right. But the point about that is um, Google, get on the Googler. I know that's a, a joke um, uh, or a story I've kind of created based on a piece of uh, advice I saw at one stage. Um, but the point is that if you can get on the Googler and Google on the Bing for things like jokes about my workplace, jokes about my uh, dentist, jokes about my doctor, lawyer, etc., and try and bring them in in a relevant manner then to your material. It will really help you. Uh, you don't have to, one of the things I would say about jokes is that um, 
we started off at the very start by I asked you um, uh, why did uh, Wazo work? It worked because of surprise. So never tell your audience, oh, I'm going to tell you a funny story. Right? Tell the story. If it's funny, it will, they will laugh at it. But when you start telling them, I'm going to tell you a funny story, they're just waiting for the punchline. <laughs> All right? And if it doesn't work, then you've let yourself down. The other thing is, don't, in most cases, uh, uh, this isn't an absolute, but be, be careful how you use jokes. Um, don't necessarily say, I want to tell you a joke, okay? Go in possibly and start the, the joke and see how it goes. And if you can actually make the joke relevant, it can really be useful then for your audience. So basically, the lesson there is don't forecast your humor. Right? Okay, so we got listen, we got anecdote, we got uncomfortable, we got the Googler, right? And the last one then in the, the workbook um, I've uh, got is um, age. And age is for, it can be mean two things. Um, if you may say something to your audience and you hear a he, 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 <coughs> you have got something that you can fertilize. And if you start working on it uh, and maybe tighten it up or just change the wording a little bit, that he, he, he can go to a oh, oh, oh. Alright? Because that basically is the way comedy works a lot, or humor works. You don't necessarily hit a home run the first time, but uh, you can win the game by just uh, hitting, improving, improving, improving. So, uh, H can stand for going from he, he, he to ho, ho, ho. Or the other re reference that can be is H is for hero, H-E-R-O, and then I put a big not behind that, N-O-T. In that don't you be the hero of your story, okay? So I'm telling you a story about the, the cop um, stopping me, and I say he's waiting for some dumb Irish paddy to go through a red light, okay? So I'm kind of self-deprecating there. Uh, if you're self-deprecating, you can actually connect better with the audience rather than just trying to say, I'm a wonderful person. Because when you tell them you're a wonderful person, it ain't going to work that well, all right? And um, one of the other things that you can um, Google uh, on the thing, um, I'm a big Mark Twain fan. I've written two books on uh, Mark Twain. This one <coughs> title, Suppose You Were an Idiot, right? And this comes from Mark Twain once said that, suppose you were an idiot, suppose you were a congressman, but I'm repeating myself. <laughs> <laughs> and how appropriate is that for, uh, for today, all right? Yeah, um, yes. So what I did was um, I took a, a two books. One is uh, what Mark Twain learned me about public speaking believe it or not, um, and I, I really believe in the power of acronyms, and, um, and for instance, yeah, I provide nine lessons in that book, what Mark Twain learned me about public speaking. Um, here's a quick quiz for you. How many letters are in the name Mark Twain? Nine. Nine, nine. wow. So, nine letters, nine lessons. What if we could create an acronym that spells out Mark Twain? that provides nine lessons that will help you to become a public speaker. The recent point I'm making there is that acronyms really work, right? Laugh, you want to remember the word laugh when you try to figure out that. I'm obviously saying that you, and that was for uncomfortable, wasn't it? Okay, so we got listen, anecdote, you was uncomfortable, G is the Googler. And one of the ways you can get on the Googler to really add humor to your presentation is Google for quotations, right? So, if you're in some uh, business, um, you can Google for quotations on uh, healthcare, um, or humorous quotations, you can Google for humorous quotations from uh, cultural marks, you can Google for humorous quotations from Oscar Wilde, uh, from so many other different people. I mean, some quotations that Mark Twain uh, came up with, for instance, were, um, uh, he said, uh, or I suppose you were an idiot, and suppose you were a member of Congress, but I repeat myself. Uh, another one, uh, he was saying, why it is telegraphed all over the country and commented on as something wonderful if a congressman votes honestly and unselfishly. Right? That's probably pretty appropriate for uh, t today as well. But uh, Twain is famous for so many different quotes, as is Oscar Wilde, Roger Marx, etc. Try and find quotes related to your speech. Right? And so you can Google quotes about, let's say you're doing a speech on driving from Chicago to Wisconsin for a, your humorous speech competition. Uh, maybe just see if you can do find some humorous quotes about cars, 
about hotels, about uh, traffic cops or something like that, and possibly drop them into your presentation. Making sense? Okay. Anyone got any qu questions uh, before I uh, we wrap you up very shortly? Yeah? Yes, I had a question. The idea, though, of Googling, that won't work, though, if you're in a humor speech contest, because if you use humor that's was developed by someone else, it's not original, is it? Uh, well, no, it's a, it, 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 that's a fair point. But, I mean, you can actually use things like quotes, for instance. Well, quotes yeah, you use this is why for, for doing person. it. Right, but but I, I know there are been instances where people have actually plagiarized the material. I'm not suggesting that. What I am suggesting is that you can use appropriate material that is uh, relevant uh, for the, the time. And it only has to be maybe, I mean, a quote could be 10 to 11 seconds kind of thing. Uh, or it could be a little bit right. longer. But um, don't plagiarize, but use material. Um, the other thing is that when you're doing presentations, uh, let's say away from the uh, speech competition, but you're looking for presentations, you're doing presentations to a business audience. Um, Google things like, Funny newspaper headlines, right? You will come up with an amazing amount of material, and I would be reasonably confident that uh, with all of those goofy newspaper headlines out there, you could probably find something that you could put up on your PowerPoint presentation to either reinforce the point or make a, a break in the uh, tough, uh, intense presentation that you're doing, okay? And that's just one other example of what you, what you can do. Um, so we've got listen, anecdote, uncomfortable, the Googler, ages for hero or hero not or he 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 to ho ho ho. Other things that you could actually Google and look for, uh, well, what I would say here is that find things that, that there's a contrast in. All right. So for instance, uh, no, I was reading a, a book uh, last night. It was uh, my life as a, an intellectual by Paris Hilton. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty short, I admit. <laughs> right. um, but then I was debating whether or not I would actually read Donald Trump's latest book, uh, which is titled, Now That I'm Humble, I'm Perfect. <laughs> okay? um, or another one I was actually looking at was um, something by uh, Taylor Swift. Um, uh, developing long-term relationships. <laughs> okay. Now look at what we've done there. We've taken something that each of these people are famous for. We've taken the contrast. All right. So Paris Hilton, um, my life as an intellectual. I actually believe she's actually quite brainy. I mean, she's a good business person, but she doesn't come across as that. Uh, my life as an intellectual is just totally the opposite of what the perception of Paris Hilton is. All right. So Donald Trump. Now that I'm humble, I'm perfect. Right, humility and Donald Trump. The only way you can use them in a sentence is in that sentence. All right. Um, and then Taylor Swift, famous for uh, long-term relationships, she ain't. So look at something that a person is famous for, and see whether or not you can take a contrast and drop it into the presentation. All right. So um, any other uh, questions? So a few other things that we get to talk about here in the, uh, that I've got here in the, the book. Uh, funny sayings, or we've spoken about that. Uh, we can also look at um, industries. Um, Jill, I know you were flying uh, from uh, Turkey the last uh, uh, 20 Yeah, let's share an embarrassing years. moment. Right. Uh, don't want to do that. But, I mean, it's amazing, like, Jill wasn't, she flew United and she wasn't dragged off the plane. <laughs> really good way to find materials. So if you're in a business presentation of any kind, customer service is always important. You can easily find ways to add customer jokes to your presentation. Another story about, a, I remember being on a flight a couple of months back, and the person, we, uh, we sat, the flight then came up and uh, said to the person beside me, uh, uh, lunch to the person beside me, and the, the man said, um, uh, what are my choices? She responded, yes or no. no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, no, that's obviously a goofball one that didn't happen. But I remember seeing it somewhere and I just put it down on the list. Put it down on the list, okay? So other things are um, uh, exaggeration is really helpful. In that story that I did about the, the cop, I said, I pray the cop had this vision of Ireland that the roads were still unpaved. 
that milk was still brought to the creamery via Don Keen Park, that traffic lights, if they exist, are basically advisory, and that his firstborn son had been christened Flynn Murphy O'Flaherty. So what I was doing was, I was taking um, just a basic vision of a cop, but then I started to exaggerate how he might be uh, presented. And uh, as I, I've developed uh, that story, I mean, I think maybe the first time I said that I probably thought the cop, uh, I was just hoping the cop uh, thought I was, um, had an Irish name. All right, but then I started developing it. Another example as well is that as you develop material, um, I know the lines there in that story now where I'm going to get good laughter. Right? So what I do is once I know people are going to laugh, after I've said my line, um, so for instance we'd say, um, I think the cop thought I was a crystal meth. All right? um, you all laugh like crazy. I knew you were going to laugh like crazy, so what I actually did was I stopped. And I waited for you to laugh. And that's one of the critical things about humor, that if you, you need to give your audience permission to laugh. And by that I mean, don't say something and just, and then I'm going to start laughing and you stamp on it. And that will actually kind of curtail them from laughing the next time that you say something funny. So that's so uh, critical. No, it is actually difficult to do because if you come up with a good ad lib, um, you don't realize the audience is going to laugh so much and you might actually stamp on it. But what you've done is you've got a he, he, he from them. And if you're, I'm recording this session here, right? Um, so I'll, be, I'll go back and see whether or not there's some new material that I can uh, take out of this. But if you've got the he, 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 and it'll go to ho, ho, ho at uh, some stage. The other thing is that in terms of uh, developing material, uh, and that story where I said the cop, um, I think the cop thought I was on uh, Crystal Men. I originally came over a line that is, I think the cop thought I was smoking something, right? And it actually got quite a good response. Uh, and then I started to, to drop something else in, um, and the cop, I th thought the cop was out, I was doing dope or something like that. And I got a different kind of response. And then someday, I don't know why, I dropped in the line, I thought the cop thought I was on Crystal Men and the place exploded, right? Now, I'm not sure why that happens uh, uh, as such, but there was a difference between smoking something and crystal meth. But I'll also give you something that uh, you need to be careful of. I'll give you a few examples where I've never bombed. Uh, I mean, I do serious business presentations, and I tell a lot of serious business presentations through humor stories. I've never bombed, but there have been a few times when I kind of thought, ooh, that uh, material isn't uh, getting as much laughter as I would like. So for instance, in areas where I know crystal meth is a problem, mm -hmm. if you go on to some of the uh, uh, Midwest or the poorer areas where crystal meth is just ravaging the communities, I will not use a line, I thought he was not like crystal meth. I'd say I thought he was smoking something. All right? Um, another example, uh, well, I, what I would say there is that if you, if you think, if you're worried, of what the audience reaction is going to be. Don't want to use it. That's the basic line. Um, I had a friend of mine a couple of uh, weeks ago um, who uh, uh, was asking me for some advice and some humorous material, and I said, why are you asking? And I, he said, well, I'm not sure about whether I should use it. I said, that's your answer. Okay, all right, so if you're ever unsure, uh, don't uh, use that. So, uh, all right, so just a few other uh, quick points on uh, material. So we've got uh, other areas that you can go to find a new, new material are, um, there's a uh, humorous song titles. That can be very, very useful for you in adding material to your presentation. So for instance, I speak a lot about, uh, one of my concepts is the gift of gap. And gee golly gosh, GAB is an acronym, all right? It's an acronym for goals, attitudes, behavior, all right? So when I'm speaking to our audiences, business audiences or associations, I talk about the power of goals, attitudes, behavior, the gift of GAB. I often try and reinforce my material with uh, just goofy sound titles, kind of, kind, of, kind of coming back to the end of the presentation. So for instance, when I'm talking about uh, clear goals, right? Um, I actually say something like, uh, here's a goofy song title to remind you of uh, goals. And this is the song title where a person had a goal. The song title is, come into the cornfield, Nelly, and I'll kiss you between the ears. <laughs> <laughs> right? oh. Totally goofy.
football, okay? Um, attitude is about having a good attitude and helping people. I'm kind of spinning this now a little bit here. But one of the song titles about attitude or about helping, helping people is My John Deere was breaking your land when your dear John was breaking my heart. Aww. <laughs> right. And then I also talk about the business, the business environment that you create uh, around you or with your colleagues or in the sales environment. And I say that if you create a bad business environment, um, you're going to lose, you're going to cause major problems, etc. So the song title there shows that uh, uh, you can be seduced by your environment in a negative way. The song title is, If she hadn't been so good looking, I might have seen the train coming. But <laughs> um, well the point there is that this is another example of you get onto the Googler and Google for humor song titles. And what you will actually come up when you Google that is you will get the daft song titles, really stupid song titles, all nearly all country songs. Alright? <laughs> because you know what happens when you pay when you play a country song backwards, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, you get your uh, house back, you get your wife back, you get your first wife back, you get your grandma back, etc. You do a song title. So that basically is just some of the things I want to speak to you about. So what was the acronym? Lab. Lab okay? M-A-U-G-H. Listen, anecdote, especially anecdotes that are you uncomfortable at the time. G is get on the Googler. H is being um, go from he 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 to ho ho ho, uh, or also make sure your H is hero not, that you're not the, the hero. And they're just uh, five elements that we can talk about. Um, if you want to have to hang around uh, later, um, I've got this little uh, workbook, I've also got CDs around the, the topic, and I've also got the Mark Twain quotes, if, if you would like to purchase any of those. Afterwards. It's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you, um, and uh, thank you very much for your time. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll see you next <laughs> Yeah.